Hi, welcome to episode 7 of Movie Time with Matt and Derek. I'm Matt Lines. And I'm Derek Terrell. As always, we're going to start off with the weekend box office. In first place, we have Onward, which grossed $39.1 million. Have you seen Onward? No, I haven't. Um, uh, I'm not really looking too forward for the, really? this movie. Yeah. I, I thought it looked pretty good. You know, I I mean, it's Pixar, so yeah. it is. you kind of get what you see. Mm-hmm. So I, I was thinking I might see it. So what do you think? You think you'd see I mean, this I mean, I love Tom Holland and Chris Pratt. Right. But, um, that was another big selling point, so. <laughs> yeah, it was just kind of like it seemed a bit like that Pixar formula. Yes, um, it feels like a movie that I wouldn't really want to pay to see. Yeah, like I'll see it on streaming or, I mean, Disney Plus. Oh, you know, AMC um, A list. A list. Yeah. yeah. If it's so. if it's like around and I have nothing else to watch, I think I'll watch it. Cool. That's not on my my top list. All right. Number two goes to The Invisible Man, grossing fifteen point one million dollars. Uh, it is crushing it at the box office and uh, with critics. Yeah, we still need to see that one as we well. We do. Um, I'm, I I, mean, I said this last episode, I believe. Uh, I'm very much excited for this movie. Yeah. Um, the right. effects look great. The story looks interesting. It does. Um, lately, horror movies, they've, like, I've never been a huge fan of horror movies in the past. Yeah. But same. lately, they've been, they've been pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of them have been good. I think especially with, like, special effects recently mm-hmm. having proved a lot and, um, I think that also contributes to this these high quality horror movies we've been getting right. recently because it's so much easier to build suspense with this technology. Right. So yeah, I think that's huge. Number three goes to The Way Back, grossing eight point two million dollars, which we just saw. We on did. Friday. We saw that on Friday, and it was, that's it was very probably why we didn't end up seeing um, The Invisible Man. Right. Because we ended up seeing that, but I really liked it. It was. I thought it, it was, was good. a very good movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is a little formulaic with the sports formula, but they shake it up enough they do. with Ben Affleck's character. They absolutely do. And that's do. what makes the film, for me, was mm-hmm. Ben Affleck's character and his arc in progression over the movie. I, Re- I really set it apart from other movies of the genre. So, yeah. Number four goes to Sonic the Hedgehog, grossing $7.7 million. Um, again, this one's kind of like hit or miss. I've heard it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, I love Jim Carrey, so I'm sure I'll see it at one point. Yeah, that's what um, was making me want to see it was Jim Carrey, and then right. um, I never, I wasn't big in the games or anything like that. Right. But um, I do like how they did listen to the fans because there were a lot of people when the first trailer came out that were like freaking out, and they changed yeah. it. So um, that kind of studio dedication does make me want to like check it out. So I'll, and same with Jim Carrey, so I'll probably right. end up checking it out eventually. And I feel like if like. If the movie has a good box office, it'll yeah. show like, oh, like the studio would be like, right, we made a good call. So I feel like it does deserve the reward of like, okay, right. you listen to us, we should see. It. And that's a good lesson for any studio to right. if the fans, especially with an established character like mm-hmm. that, fans are fan, very, very right. particular with what right. they want and what they don't want. Yeah. So I think there's something to be learned there for studios. Absolutely. And number five goes to The Call of the Wild, grossing $6 million. Yeah, more on that later. Awesome. But I think I'm ready to talk about some trailers. How about you? I am so ready to talk yes. about Yes. So I wanted to start off right away. We did talk about a Black Widow trailer before, <clears throat> but yes. we just got an amazing Black Widow trailer. This, by far, day. has been the best. Absolutely. So obviously starring Scarlett Johansson, this movie looks like it's going to be really good. It does. There's so many characters in it that I'm excited for. With mm-hmm. these Marvel movies, I feel like I'm often like, okay, I'm ready to go see this character. I'm going re- ready to see this character. Right. You know, with Ant-Man, you have, like, your main character that you want to see. Mm-hmm. But with this Black Widow movie, it doesn't feel like that. It doesn't look like I'm going to the Black Widow movie just to see Black Widow. It makes it so I want to see Red Guardian, mm-hmm. and I want to see Taskmaster. And it, that really has gotten me excited because there looks like, there's going to be a lot of stuff that's interesting in this movie, not mm-hmm. just the main character in their journey. So yeah. I'm really looking forward to it. What about you? Uh, I absolutely am looking forward to it. Um, yeah. The action looks great. A lot of the humor was, I actually laughed out loud a few times at the trailer. I did too. And um, I mean, I love Marvel movies as much as everybody else does. Endgame was a masterpiece, but um, they they usually follow a formula. Agreed. And with this movie, like even with the humor, 
uh, it seems like it's kind of taking risks and it's straying away from that formula. Yeah. From the trailers. Right. We'll see when the movie comes out. And even like the themes in it, like the theme of family right. and stuff like that looks really deep and less shallow than some other entries in the mm-hmm. MCU that are more about just that action movie. But um, that's not to discredit the action because the action looks amazing. It looks the fight scenes good. look awesome. It has the choreographer, the fight choreographer from John Wick. Mm. So that definitely will play to the strengths of the Black Widow character and the other characters in the movie. Overall, I'm really looking forward to it. Can't wait. Sorry, second one is Greyhound. Yes. That looked good, obviously starring Tom Hanks, inspired by actual events. So um, it's the Battle of the Atlantic that it is kind of portraying here. And, um, yeah, it's, so that's the longest, largest, and most complex battle in history. That's what people are saying. And that's what's kind of perceived as this battle. So basically, U.S. Navy Commander Ernest Krauss is assigned to lead an Allied convoy across the Atlantic during World War II. His convoy is pursued by German U-boats. So those are the, the stakes look high in yep. this movie. And high stakes always are what drive these movies, this type of movie. And that's what makes them good. So... I'm uh, I'm excited to see Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks is always a win. He's awesome. Absolutely. But he wrote this movie, and yes. he's written two yes, other movies did. before, and they haven't done great. But this movie looks awesome. Mm. Um, with yeah. the the whole like setting taking place in like the middle of the ocean. Yes. In that isolation. Yeah. It looks incredible. Yeah. I cannot wait for this movie. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, it looks like. A lot of the suspense reminds me of Dunkirk mm-hmm. and like the urgency of that. Right. And I think like that's we're gonna get a lot of those same like beats and Dunkirk was great and this looks great too. Yeah. So definitely looking forward to seeing this one. All right, I think it's time. Time for the, our discussion. The call of the wild. The call of the wild, yeah. Absolutely. So right. Derek, what did you think of Call of the Wild? So I went into Call of the Wild really looking forward to the characters, just especially Buck and Harrison Ford's character, just kind of the way they interact. But we got a lot less of Harrison Ford's character than I thought, but I was okay with that. Mm -hmm. And I thought they did a really good job. Um, Buck's journey was very long and it was very good and it was very rewarding. Mm -hmm. And I think that was the biggest thing for me was that his this character who can't who can't speak had such this character arc, such a great character arc over the whole movie, and um, they did a really good job of showing emotion through the dog. They did an incredible and, job. And um, I think that really sold it for me was that arc and just everything it, he went through, you know, and kind of the spirit of it, that character was really just touching and um, the way it kept fighting and made it, and, you know, the way it ended was the way it ended, and... It was a good character arc overall. So I that's what really sold me on the movie was that character arc and how Harrison Ford's character played into that. So I, yeah. I completely agree. Um, first of all, the CGI on the character was yes. amazing. Yeah. With the exception of one part, the CGI in the movie was great right. all around. Um, I mean, it's not can't be easy to have people um, going up snowy mountains no. and through snowstorms and oh, the sets. fights with animals. Yeah. But... It was awesome. And being a dog owner, seeing all the little like mannerisms, yeah. character um, choices they made with Buck, it was it was awesome. Yeah. Seeing like him step in snow for the first time. Oh it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a dog person, go see this movie. Yeah. But you might have to look away a few times because it gets It does. Yeah. For a PG movie. Um, there were some pretty tense moments in there. There was, yeah. And um yeah. And it wasn't like it wasn't gratuitous. It no. felt like it needed to happen. Right. To have Buck go through all these struggles, and it, like you said, it made that ending so rewarding. It did. It really did. And um, yeah, the the character arcs were just so good. Even um, Harrison Ford's character, his mm-hmm. arc, and um, the way it really <clears throat> coincided with Buck's arc, and it, everything just lined up really well. And even like the little bits of comedy they had in there, they used it sparingly, but it was done well. Yes. Um, this specific scene with the river that mm-hmm. was very yeah. funny, and uh, we're we're not going to spoil anything this time around. We have made that our goal to no yeah. longer spoil these movies. It's it's time for a change. It is. Um, so we had a fan. It's time. Yeah, yeah. We had a fan tell us that we spoiled their movie, and um, yeah, felt felt real bad. So no more spoilers. But yeah, never. Again. Overall, 
I really liked the film and the characters drove it. Story was good. Um, they did a really good job of making you like some characters and feel bad for some characters mm-hmm. and absolutely hate some characters. Yes, that that was that's where like my one really con comes in. Really, because they have a villain in the movie, as most movies do, um, and he was. And this might be because it's a PG movie, right? But he was super one note. He oh, was yeah. bad because he was bad. He didn't have any really like any mo- true motivations, and we didn't have any time dedicated to him to see right. why he was such a jerk. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, and he was just a he, jerk. He, he was, was just the worst. He was. He was terrible. And maybe because I don't know. It was it, that part of the story seemed a little bit sloppy. And I, I've told you this before. Right. There's. Something that you think happens, and you're like, oh, wow, that's terrible. However, I get why that has to happen to Buck. And then there's, like, a scene, like, ten minutes later, and it's just one line that says, oh, that didn't happen. Yeah. And I was kind of like, why not? Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And again, no spoilers, because we're not going to do that anymore. (laughs) But it was, it kind of caught me off guard, and I'm like, well, (laughs) if you made me feel that way, why not? Yeah. Like, it didn't didn't make sense to me, but it didn't hurt the overall story, I guess. And the other antagonist is worth mentioning, too. The um, dog who's the leader of the yes. pack there. That was um, a villain. <laughs> yeah. I, I bought into They did a good job with him. Yes. And, yeah, that his motives were clear. Yep. And it showed over a little bit of a montage, like, how it developed. And, um, yeah, the that – I like to see this movie in, like, kind of three-thirds – Kind of. You have like the beginning, then you have his time with the dog sleds, mm-hmm. as seen in the trailer. No spoilers. <laughs> so, and then um, towards the end with Harrison Ford's yes. character and that journey. And um, I really enjoyed that second third of it more than I thought I would. I thought I really went to the theater for that third part with Harrison Ford's character, mm-hmm. but I really liked that second part of it. The first it was part was good. good for setting up, but I really liked that second part a lot more than I thought I would. So, yeah, yeah, I agree. And especially the way they ended that second yes. part of the movie. Yes. It was so satisfying. It was. It felt earned. Yeah. Yeah. So it, w- it was good. Um, I, d- I wouldn't say it's like a master class of cinema. No. I don't think this is going to be winning any Oscars. No, of course not. But um, And it, I mean, you can see in the box office, it's it's a flop. Yeah, which is unfortunate. It is, because it, it was a, a good movie, but yeah. um, it it's not a perfect movie. No. Um, but I, I did enjoy it, and I yeah. would recommend it to anyone. Yes. Especially if you read the book. Yes. Because they do switch some things up. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, with the um, ending. Mm-hmm. is different. So the ending's definitely different than the book. So, yeah. And and better than the, yes, the ending. Yes, I would say. I say. Yeah, I was going to say that, yeah. but <laughs> I don't want to make a bold statement like that. Yeah. That's okay. That's um, what it's all about. There, there are shots, especially with... Um, with the Alaskan sky, oh, like all the different colors. That That's what I, I did want to talk about that a little bit. Is the sets were so they were good. Great. They really were. In the sky boxes they used, in the wide shots mm-hmm. in general were just so amazing. And the environments they built, they just did a really good job with that. Like, um, especially because that dog sled part, they're traveling, and you can see like them. They're going fast, and the music's really joyful, and things mm-hmm. are going well, and it's really intense, and things are going bad, and um. Yeah, th- I think they just filmed that really well, those traveling scenes. And, you know, it was kind of, like, relaxing. You know, you, like, they're just traveling down the roads, and then it's a wide shot, the music's playing, the sky looks great, every- everything looks good in the shot, nothing really takes you out of it. And um, you're really in the moment with those. Yeah. And I think they did a really good job with the sets, for sure. They did. One thing in the beginning of the movie, and this isn't a flaw uh, at all, but this is just... An it- observation. Yeah, it was. It took me a little bit to get used to the size of Buck, because when he's yeah. running through the house, I'm like, like that's not right. No. But he's like supposed to be like this giant right. dog, and right. um, I was surprised at like how massive. The yeah, dog he was. was big. Yeah, like there were some shots you saw it more than others, where some shots he's like, you know, it's kind of hard to compare him with other objects around. Right. But then like when he like crashed, it's in the trailer. When he crashes into the um, the, and knocks the vase. Yeah, over. yeah, right yeah. there into like that bureau thing. He's it's like the dog. same height of it. <laughs> yeah. And then um, but like there's the, other parts where and then he's up next to these other dogs and yeah. he's like towering over them, 
And he's he was huge. He was a giant. Like, he, he was a massive dog. Even once again in the trailer, the bear. Yeah. That is in there. He like obviously the bear is much bigger. Yeah. But on a normal bear to dog scale, he <laughs> a was bear he to was dog hold, ratio. Right. He was holding his ground. Yeah. Size wise, like against that bear. Like, yeah. Yeah. It was it was a little bit jarring at first. But it was. It makes sense for the story that he's good at his job. Yeah. Because he's a big yeah, dog. He was huge. <laughs> he was. And it also added to the believability when characters could not move him mm-hmm. because he was so big. Yeah. And um, yeah, I liked that aspect of it. Kind of added to his personality. Right. You know? He's a big, lovable teddy bear. Yeah. But don't mess with him. No, definitely not. No spoilers. No. <laughs> Not again. Once again, I'd recommend this movie to just about anybody, especially if you like dogs. If you don't like dogs, be happy. Just love dogs. Dogs are great. Um, I think you need to change your personality. If you're a cat person, that's great. Cats are great. But you can love both. And you can watch the Cats movie if you like cats. (laughs) Yeah. And this is the true message of this episode. Love dogs. Dogs are fantastic. If you don't have a dog, get a dog. If you're allergic to a dog... Get one get of a those stuffed hairless dog. ones, yeah. 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 Or get a cat. All right. Well, I think that wraps think that up sums our it up, yeah. discussion here. I said everything I needed to. Um, definitely check out this movie if you haven't already. Um, yeah, I think that's that. Uh, thanks for watching. Tune in Tuesday for a brand new episode of the Weekly Wave. Yep. And if you want to be part of our next discussion, make sure you tune in for that one, okay? <laughs>